Hi everyone, I'm Matthew. I head up the Innovation Agency at London College of Fashion and I'm really excited to be talking to you today about the work that we've been doing around building a fashion metaverse. Um, a little bit about us at LCF. The Innovation Agency has a remit to explore any emerging technologies and their impact on the fashion and retail industry. So what we try to do is build proof of concept with that technology to demonstrate what is possible to the fashion industry and try and accelerate the pace of change. Um, we've been working for a long time around digital products and I, I really want to take some time to talk through the sort of work that we've been doing to build this pathway to a fashion metaverse and we we started experimenting kind of all the way back in around 2015 looking at virtual try-on so in this instance you can see a scarf that uh, is not real that's a 3d scarf being worn by emma shipley a scarf designer here in london and you know we wanted to begin to experiment with virtual try-on to see what that would do for young designers and how they might be able to create products digitally before they physically have to manufacture it and then kind of quickly shifted on into looking at garments themselves and this particular project with uh, the fabricant and Sadie Clayton was a really early example of how we can begin to create an authentic, realistic digital double of a physical product. But of course, you know, for many brands, that creation in digital is quite challenging and we're very, very fortunate at the college to have a photogrammetry rig. So we do a lot of scanning at the college. And here is an example of a, a mulberry bag that we scanned, uh, I think back in 2017, we did this. Um, and I think kind of the, the opportunity for brands who are not currently working in digital to begin to take their physical products into that space is what scanning off uh, offers up for those brands. Um, here is another really interesting example of where we've used scanning technologies not just for product but for people as well. So the model here was scanned um, and also the garments themselves and they were all done separately and I think you know what this is beginning to provide is a, a much more realistic virtual try on experience. So there's very practical applications of where scanning and digital content can come together to create you know, a more compelling experience for consumers. Um, and also when you have that 3D content, what you can begin to do is create more immersive experiences. So here back in pre-COVID days, here we were in the office um, using a Magic Leaps headset to look at those 3D models and you know, excuse my wobbly head in this images, but um, this gives a really good example of my perspective looking at these digital garments and that ability for us to get really close to the product. Um, it, it feels like a much more tangible and visceral experience when you can place things into mixed reality, into the environment around you. But I think lockdown was a, a real challenge for all of us uh, across all sectors, of course. Um, and that creation of physical to digital was another area that we we wanted to begin to explore even during those periods. So what we did during lockdown was look at some machine learning techniques. And this is a, a video of some old footage from one of our catwalk shows at the college. And what we were able to do was run open pose and begin to track the skeletal data of the models. And you can see the audience as well. Um, and and then we were able to extract that skeletal data and place that into a virtual environment. So we were able to, to use that movement data to create entirely new virtual experiences. So old existing data allowing us to create something new um, is a really, really interesting technique, particularly during these times. Uh, and again, begins to show the breadth of things that you can do and how we can explore this space. Um, Immersive experiences are really, really important. And, you know, I can go back to 2018 and a project that we developed with Lucasfilm and Industrial Light and Magic, a big film studio in the United States of America. 
um, where we really, I guess this is one of the very early metaverse examples of placing real-time rendered visual effects onto a physical environment. And uh, we hijacked Stephen Ty's London Fashion Week presentation back in February 2018. And we, uh, we thought that it would be really amazing to not just give show notes to explain the inspiration behind Stephen's show, but to literally take the audience there and place you into that experience. Uh, and so that's what we did. So you can see this environment came to life in real time all around you. And the longer you stayed at the venue, the more uh, that uh, you got to experience. And it was, you know, a really, really fascinating experience to see digital models coming together with physical models. And actually, when we were rehearsing this, the uh, the motion capture performer who you can see in the video here, she uh, she came up to me during rehearsals and said, Matt, how should I walk when I wear this digital garment? Because it feels a little bit different to the other one. And I had to take a moment and say, what what do you mean it feels different? You're, you're just wearing a motion capture suit. And, you know, I think we all know that what you wear changes how you feel. But it was a really, really early indication of wearing digital garments can affect uh, our physical uh, mentality and behaviour. Um, it really was uh, a very, very early example. Um, now, if you create these digital worlds, then I think you need digital humans to populate them. Um, and so we've looked at this through so many different avenues. And this is a, a deep fake example where we were able to take the face of Katie Barron and apply it, who's a journalist, and apply that to all of these different bodies. So the, the face in these videos does not belong to any of those bodies. This was a, a quick 30 second scan of her face on a mobile phone. And then we were able to place that onto those bodies. And, you know, I think a lot of people get quite unnerved by that technology, but um, here is a really good example of what you might look like wearing those particular garments. And I think there are some really useful practical applications. Um, but, you know, we also want to create more realistic digital humans too. And this is, if any of you know the team, this is my colleague Moin. Um, and last summer, we created a digital version of Moin with, uh, with Microsoft. And we didn't just do Moin, we also created a, a digital double of Lisa in the team as well. So you can see Lisa here in the video. Um, and we did this from a kind of styling perspective. So the digital humans, once created, were able to uh, make uh, wardrobe suggestions to you based on what your calendar uh, is, what, your, what the weather is, uh, where you might be going all of these things and using cloud compute to pull all of that information out and so it was it was a really cool example of how we can begin to create these interesting digital experiences using avatars and digital clothing and find a place for it in our lives um, i mean a few months later epic and unreal engine announced the meta humans and you can begin to see even in the space of just a few months how much better it's and how much easier it's becoming to create digital humans so i think the role of the avatar the role of the digital human will be really really important in this fashion metaverse because you know once you create an avatar of course they have to have clothes and you know i think that that is a massive creative opportunity for us um, I mean, a little bit more about placing physical uh, items and people into digital spaces. You know, we we showed uh, a few years ago uh, of how we could live stream to devices all over the world. We worked with a company called Beam uh, to live stream our catwalk show to the streets of London and to Seattle in augmented reality over a 4G network. It was a really, really cool experiment. And... You know, we've done similar exercises with London designers like J.W. Anderson. Um, and, you know, that is a useful selling tool for those brands. But, I, you know, I mentioned earlier that we have really good capability at the college. And alongside our photogrammetry rig, we were able to begin to push the capabilities of that rig into volumetric capture. So rather than static imagery, we were able to capture video. 
uh, and we uh, we used my my colleague Jade and we placed her into the rig and started to capture video and when you get video you can place uh, that person into uh, a game engine environment and begin to do all sorts of really exciting stuff and so the result of that was a project called Pose XR and you can um, you can see the video here we we were able to place Jade into Unity uh, and you as a visitor to this to this experience and it's still live now so if you go to Pose XR's website you can have this experience where you can change the background you can change the lighting you can change the props you can then take your photo and so effectively you become an art director within a virtual space and we're super super interested in how this shift into digital technologies will allow for shifting job roles too um, but I think it, it goes further than that into e-commerce as well. And that flat 2D e-commerce world that we've all been used, uh, used to experiencing over the years is really changing. So um, back in December of last year, um, we were able to partner with an amazing startup called Anam XR, um, who were born out of London College of Fashion and uh, Pangaea to create something which gives you a hint of what e-com could look like in the future. Like no more scrolling through a catalogue, you can actually be part of the ex experience and be deep inside it. Um, and it's really, really engaging. It feels much more like you're inside a game and any of you who have spent time gaming will understand the mechanics of this. Um, it's, it's really, really exciting to see e-commerce being pushed into a new field. But if any of this is going to become really, really interesting to us, it has to be delivered in real time. And so we have been doing an awful lot of work around how we make real time technologies deliver a more realistic experience. So this is looking at real time cloth simulation and how we can make garments move in response to a motion capture performance in this case and make the material move as it should do in the real world. Um, so here you can see Jade again uh, being directed by me. Look at those moves. Incredible, right? Um, and you can see her driving an avatar within a virtual space, but that cloth is moving and responding in real time to her performance. Um, this is going to be crucial to much more realistic virtual experiences and digital fashion experiences. Um, and that ability to do things in real time um, can be done not just for clothing but also for your team as well so uh, in the summer this year we were able to work as a team virtually in real time to direct a show uh, or a performance so we did that in collaboration with Yahoo Studios in London um, and built this genuinely amazing experience that was shot at a virtual production stage so you can see Jade with the background around her and the LED screens but the team were scattered across London in virtual reality and we were all able to be within this virtual space in real time to direct it so I was there on the stage but the team were able to drop in and say let's change the lighting let's change the weather let's change the actual scene itself let's change where things are positioned we can move them all around in real time we could see that all through virtual cameras in real time um, and it allowed us to I mean, working in a game engine obviously allows you to do this um, very very rapidly and responsively and um, makes for a different kind of decision making process so this real-time creative is really exciting and will challenge how we see and how we create in virtual spaces uh, removing so many of the barriers that we've had before and I think you know I'll sum up by saying what is happening is we are beginning to build this completely new fashion ecosystem one where fashion does not need to be physical to be real um, and I think this is something which will result in new brands new ways of engaging with fashion as we know it today and we will look back on 2020 2021 as the moment that we started to build this new world um, and, you know, I always finish with some amazing handsome team shots. So here's Moyne and myself wearing our digital Burberry puffers. We'll be able to deliver all of this in real time soon enough. 
Um, so thank you everyone, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'm Matthew Drinkwater, Head of the Fashion Innovation Agency at London College of Fashion. Really thrilled to be with you today. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.